Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. Welcome to my YouTube video, uh, YouTube video, YouTube channel. Um, thank you everybody for your amazing support of the snippets, which I'm absolutely loving seeing all your interpretations. You're all so talented. So what I'm going to do today is it's a little catch up video. So I'm going to take a little bit longer today and we're just going to enjoy some creative time together. Now, the reason I do these videos is to inspire you, as you all know by now. I mean, I've been doing this for All and Create for seven years and I've been a stamper now for 28 years. But you all know that I'm not an artist. I'm just a creative that loves stamping and it's my way that I can be creative. It's just my outlet. It's the way I can... I can just relax, I can be creative in my own style um, and just enjoy a little bit of freedom um, and I don't have to be an artist to do that and neither do you. Um, I always think that the art comes in all forms, whether you're a dancer, whether you're a gardener, whether you're a sculptor, um, whether you're a sewist. It doesn't matter what that art form is. We can all be creative in different ways, in different shapes and forms. And I'm a great believer that you don't have to be an artist, you know, as, as people often say, to be creative. You can be creative in lots of different forms that makes you happy. And as long as you're happy with that outcome, I think that's the best thing. And I think that's why I do videos. I do videos to show that if I can do it, anybody can do it. And I'm really appreciative that I'm allowed to design stamps. As you know, I'm not a fine artist, you know, I've not gone to college or university or anything like that. But I love the fact that um, I've been allowed to have my little sketchy doodles my form of art has been allowed to be produced in stamp form so it just gives me that freedom to enjoy myself and just go into my own little world um, and that's what I'm hoping you can do as well and I'm hoping that my videos show that it's all achievable whatever level you're at it doesn't matter whether you're just starting out in the stamping um platform or or whatever you know and i'm hoping it's all just achievable for you and that's why i do videos and i do videos so that if you like my style or you love the stamps that you feel that you can you can join along in this journey with me so this video is my time to catch up with you all just to say hello and that I hope you're all well and just so that we can spend a little bit of creative time together I'm doing the snippets for those of us that just want to join along, just creating little snippets as well. But I want to appeal to a wide audience. So for those of you that like to just take an hour out of your week just to create something as well. So I like to just vary it up in different ways. So what we're going to do first, what Trace is going to do first is turn the heating down because I feel like I'm being boiled. I'm a woman of a certain age, and can I control my temperature? No, I can't. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create with my Alstroemeria stamp, stamp set 903. I literally had the stamp on the side to create, I was going to create a snippet, and then I thought, no, I'm going to take a little bit longer today and just enjoy a little bit of creative time. So what I'm using is I'm using some craft card. I haven't used craft card for a while, so I thought we'd use some craft card. And I'm going to use this large stamp here that can be broken down into little bits and pieces as well, if you wish. So let's just take, and I'm just going to ink this stamp up with a really good layer of ink. What makes me laugh is I've dumped my craft card on the floor. I've not put it on my desk, so I'm going to have to reach over eventually. So we're just going to make sure we've got a good layer of ink. This is also my opportunity 
to spend time with those of you that have never stamped before as well and just to go through things in detail now when you're using a stamp this size you need to make sure that you give it a really good inking this ink pad i've dated it as the 29th of november so that's november december Jan no december january february march and we're coming into april so this ink pad is getting a little bit drier now it's probably lasted me about five months but as most of you know i stamp most days so it's a good good i like to use these ink pads because they stay wetter longer and because of all the detail on these stamps i'm looking at this now because i'm thinking there's actually something on my stamp there it's actually a little bit of something on my stamp um but i use these ink pads because they give they stay wetter longer and they pick up the detail beautifully you can get reinkers for these now which is great for those of you that like to re-ink your ink pads. So you can just turn your ink pad just to the light and you can see and make sure that you've got enough ink on there. And I'm just faffing around just to decide where I want that ink. Now, with craft card, it's very absorbent. You know, it's... It, it absorbs that ink and you just need to make sure with the craft card that you get you give even pressure just all over your stamp the the craft card you with this ink you want you know it's designed for the cards that you know absorb the ink but with the craft card it sort of it sucks that ink into the card so you just need to make sure that straight away you give a good even pressure over your stamp. You can use these acrylic blocks from All and Create. You can lever those acrylic blocks just to give really good leverage, just so that you get this area here. Now, when you're stamping, don't be in a rush to lift that stamp, whether you're doing a snippet or whether you're doing a longer version and you're joining along with me now just make sure that you don't rush lifting that stamp and just to prevent the wobble always make sure that you've got hands on the acrylic block that you don't create a wobble so we can just leverage that acrylic block and what you end up with is a beautiful stamped background doesn't that give a beautiful stamped background just fantastic now i said to you that i'd have to reach over which i did nothing new there right so what i want to do then is just let's move this on one side just place that on one side and i want to create some 3d element as well so what we're going to do is just ink up the flower and maybe the hexagon. I'll see what I feel. So just take your time again, just to ink up the part of the stamp that you wish to use. So I'm just inking up and giving that a good inking. So I've got the craft card again, just judging which is the right side, which isn't always easy sometimes. So just, let me just place that there. So I want to create a little bit of a, a 3D element just to my card. And I love the fact that when you've got sort of a background stamp like this, you can really break that up and add layers, which I also love as well. Well, I love lots of different things, whether it's clean and simple, whether it's the snippets, whether it's layered. That's why I do this hobby anyway, because I enjoy it. So let's just allow that ink just to sit on there and lever that acrylic block, which gives me that leverage. So now what I can do is cut out some of the area that I want just to give me some of that 3D element. 
So unlike the snippets, I don't want to just waste that bulb bit because I might use that. So let's just go around that for initially. Unlike the snippets, I often cut out on these videos just to show the whole process. So what I'm doing is I'm going around my Alstroemeria, my version of an Alstroemeria. Don't forget, I'm not a, a botanical artist. It's just how I see things. And also, you know, I create stamps that I'd like to use when I'm creating. And I'm very lucky that I'm given the opportunity to have these in stamp form. So we're just cutting this out. So I'm just creating a little bit of a 3D element and I'm just leaving a little, little bit of a, a tiny border. There we go. So I'm just cutting around part of the design. I love splitting some of the design up and just adding a little bit of a 3D element. Just makes it a little bit more interesting. It also changes the stamp up a little bit. But don't forget, if, you know, adding the layers isn't your cup of tea, don't worry, just pair it back a little bit. No problem at all. As long as you're enjoying your creative time, that's absolutely fine. Let's just cut that out. You know me, I like to work with a smaller piece of card. I don't like to have all that card in my hand. I might use that word just later in my layering. So this little video is going to be longer because it's going into more detail In the creative process. Right, let's just remove that ink pad because I know that I'm going to get it in the way. So what I want to do is just add sort of a 3D element. So what I'm going to do, she says, um, I need a paper stump. Paper stump. So I just need a little paper stump. Let's see if I've got just got um do I want to do it with no I don't. Do you know I spend my life doing this? Okay, I've got these Carbothello Stabilo chalk pastel pencils. And I love these because they're nice and easy to use. Now, you use whatever white pencil you wish. You don't have to have these. But I use these because they're very forgiving and very easy to use, you know, and I don't have to know too many different techniques. So I'm just going to add a little bit of this pastel pencil and just Add a little bit of the of the white just to my design so I can smooth that out I didn't actually need a paper stump I can actually smooth that out with a cotton bud which I think I've got we've got that somewhere oh I put I pulled one out so it's up to you whether you use a paper stump <coughs> or whether you use a cotton board or you use your finger just to blend them out. It's entirely up to you. So just adding a little bit of that colour just to blend it out. And then I can just blend that out just blend the edges out just with my cotton cotton bud just blend them out nicely 
obviously because I'm using the craft card the black ink absorbs into the card what you really need to make sure is you need to make sure that that black ink is dry you don't want to use these and then smudge the black ink what I'm doing now is with these pastel pencils me personally I like to build up layers you know you could it's up to you if you just want to add one layer I personally like to build up the layers with the pencil just like so so each time and again with anything I often like to let the card rest so what you're doing is you're just building up that color and I, I I'm just a great believer in the fact that it's lovely if you can let the card rest a little bit when you're adding your layers you know if you go and have a cup of tea or or something like that right let me just grab another color so what I can do is because I've added that white I can then add a touch of color so what I think I'm going to do is a little bit of orange with a little bit of the red so let's just see does it have the colors on that is 310 I don't know whether it has the colors on and what color is this 221 so sort of an orange and a red so I'll take those two colors and I, I, I do like to take my time when I'm doing this but that's why sometimes it's nice to have a video where you take a little bit of a little bit longer just to do your project what I'm going to do then I only want a touch of color on this so I'm going to add a little touch of the orange doesn't matter which orange color you, you use so I'm just literally just adding a little touch of that orange because I just want it to be a suggestion of color because I'm going to add more Alstrom areas so I'm just I'm sort of just touching I'm kissing a little bit of that color just kissing a little bit of that color and what the white does that gives me a little bit a little bit of vibrancy it just lifts everything so just a little bit and then I'm going to go to the sort of more ready color and just you can see I'm just kissing a little bit of that color just to give me a little bit more depth I always like something <laughs> that's just me I like something that's easy to color with I like something that gives me results and I don't have to be you know I don't need an exam in it so what I'm going to do then is go back to the orange and just lay that color again so you can see nothing nothing too complicated at all so I'm just layering that color just to layer then I'll go back to the little bit of red don't let's forget this area here so then go back to the red just to give me a little bit more depth and I just think it's 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 nice if you can just take a little bit of time just to 
add a little bit of depth of colour. And with the white one, you can just add a few highlights as well to your design, just so that you've got that touch of colour. And you can go over with the, the pastel pencils as often as you like, just building up the colour. And it's up to you whether you use a paper stump or, like me, you can use a cotton bud just to blend some of that colour, just to blend the edges just off. And you can seal these, you can use a spray sealer if you wish. I'm not going to bother because it's not like I'm going to stroke the card. And what I'm going to do is just add this so that it gives me some depth, it gives me some height. So I'm going to use my pin flare glue or your ultra thick gel medium and I'm going to take some of the white cotton to add in some of that white element that I'm going to add with further layering. So take that cotton. I know some of you have said you end up in a mess with the cotton. It just goes in a, it, it doesn't loosen out. Just be a little bit gentle with it and, and just spread it out. Don't mess with it too much. And then that will just give me the sort of some whiteness to that design. Okay, we're letting this rest a little bit because we can add a few more white touches with a gel pen. So I'm going to add a little bit of that pin fair glue. Now, if you're going to send this in the post and you can't afford, you know, the postage costs are a little bit pricey for you, then don't add the layers just so that you don't have to pay the cost of postage. I personally either hand deliver or I send them in a box anyway. That's just me personally. There we go. So what I've done then is if we look at this stamp set, I've stamped out this image here with black ink. So I've stamped out this image here. And what I've done is I've cut it out three times. So I've cut out two full ones, as you can see, they're here on the stamp set here. And I've cut those out three times, but I've made this one a little bit shorter, just so I can add to the composition because it will go, I can, I can add some below if I wish, some on top. And I can add the smaller one just here to give me some composition. But I want to add a little bit of colour to these. Let's just make sure we add that back because I moved that. Let's just make sure we add that back. But what I want to do is just add a little bit of um, colour. I was fiddling around with then was to try and make sure I could find my sharpener that comes with the pencils that's why I was faffing so much right so let's just sharpen this orangey color a little bit unlike my um polychromos I don't need to sharpen these to such a sharp point but with my polychromos, I tend to sharpen them to a sharp point. So what I'm going to do is just now add some colour to these. And I've got that white in the background, so I don't need to add that white pencil. So let's just... Add a little bit of orange and be nice and easy just to colour with. And the good thing is I've allowed this ink 
to rest a little bit, you know, the black ink, just so that the pastel pencils don't pick up that black ink. Now you can get a pastel, a special card for pastel pencils. But for my card, you know, I'm not doing artwork that's necessarily, you know, I'm going to be um, using in a gallery. So it's not that I need that pastel pencil card stock. It's absolutely fine. I'm using my pink frog just with the pastel pencils. Just to... add that colour and I'm just adding a little layer of this, the orange colour. Just to add a bit of colour here. And sometimes I like to go through the full process of colouring everything because I just think it's nice to see the whole process sometimes. It's nice to vary it up, I think. It's nice to vary that up. And as you can see, no, nothing complicated at all in the way that I'm colouring. I will add a touch of the green to the leaves, but it's going to be very light. So what I'm going to do then is go to the ready colour. And just add a little bit of that. And I do find these pencils very sort of forgiving. You know, if you want a sort of a nice effect without any too much fuss, if that makes sense. Just a little bit. I always forget areas. I forget this area here. Let's just add. And what I can do then is go to my clean area on here and I can just blend these, this out, just blend out and you'll see more. Let me just lift this up. You can see more on the white as I blend. That's it. And the camera's now going to like what you're doing, Tracy. You can just blend it out a little bit more. Just with, can you see it picks up some of that colour? So you can just, you can blend that out quite nicely. And then you can keep adding colour. Because it's as with anything, the layers of colour you add, obviously, will give you more vibrancy and more depth. And you can even blend with your white if you wish so I'm just blending that and then just going to add a little bit more depth with the red and it's it's nice to use because you're using a, a sort of a dry pigment you're not using our normal wet pigment it just makes a nice change and blend that out just blend the edges out I just have to touch it really and it just sort of blends out but that that's why this video is a little bit longer because we're doing the whole process but look at that compared to that when you're just adding one color the difference it's just about taking your time and adding that depth of colour 
And what you have to remember is, you know, I feel that it's nice to have something achievable that we can all achieve. And we all feel good about the results. And I have to say, I really do like these pencils. Just because it does give nice results, even just with a little touch of colour. So I can just go in there and blend, blend that out. And obviously, as you blend, you're using a dry pigment. So you're sort of lifting some of that colour. So that's why I go back in and just add some more depth of that pigment. Just to, just to give me a little bit more depth. And I've always been a great believer in allowing your card to rest if you've got the time. And even, even if you add more depth like this and you colour it all in, you can just smudge with your finger and it will just pick that up because that's the whole idea with the pastel pencils. But I do think that you get a better result if you just add layers of that colour. And also, I like to use what I've got. I like to make use of the, the products that I've purchased. Don't get me wrong, there are some products, you know, that have gathered dust. So I always try to put that right and make sure that, that I use those products. And that's sometimes why I do a longer video. So just going to add the red colour. Just add that red colour. And if I want, I can just blend that totally with my orange, just so I don't remove any of that pigment. I can just blend it totally so add the red and then I can just blend that with the orange just to give me that lovely vibrancy. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to use, where have we gone? Just my little cotton bud just to blend that. And then go back to a little bit more of the red. And I'll show you the sealer I've got. I'm sure I've got some. But just remember, the colouring is about taking your time. And finding a way that works for you. Let me see if I've got that sealer. So if you want, with the pastels, got a lovely lump of glue there, is I've got this De La Rowney colourless fixative. So I can just spray it lightly with that if I wish. Let's grab some greens. So I'm then going to use a very pale one which is 560 and this one, spit it out Tracy, 560, 5, 570. I think they do these labels on these things so I can hardly see them, you know. But all I have to do with this now is just add a suggestion of that green colour. 
of just I don't have to add too much just a suggestion of those leaves so just add Let's add a little bit more down there and then I can add a little bit of that darkness just to give it some more dimension. Sometimes it's often easier to cull it and then cut out. I had these cut out because I'd probably be on the video for 25 minutes just just cutting things out so I've got some beautiful vibrancy there let's just grab this piece of scrap card just to and what I can do which is just what you want to hear is me shaking the fixative but I can just fix that colour don't forget to work in a ventilated room if you're using anything that is spray. You don't have to use that fixative. It's not necessary, especially for a card. So what I'm going to do now is play around with my card. But look, it just it looks lovely, doesn't it? Just coloured with those pastels. So now I'm going to take forever just deciding, as you can see, just on my composition because I am a pain in the neck when I decide on the composition. So we'll just take this one and what I'm going to do is I often add a little bit of glue just on one or two of the leaves and I leave some of the leaves free because it just looks, just gives a more natural feel for me personally. So let's just add so I'm going to add adhesive to this one flower, but not the second flower, just so that it stays loose. There we go. So I know that that's caught then down there. Let's just wipe that knuckle because my knuckle's got some black ink on. So this flower is then loose because it gives it a little bit more movement. I'm then going to add this flower just sort of here oh and i'm just going to flick it all over the place so i'm just going to add some pin flare to that flower and then just so that maybe one of the leaves catches let's just add a little bit of adhesive there so again i aren't sticking both the flowers down just so that again it's got a little bit of movement so these here, let me just make sure that little bit just gets stuck down. These here are not, they are, they are free, just so that that just gives movement to my design. Now this one is cut a little bit shorter, just so that we can have that bigger flower, maybe in there, do you think? Tracy is going to faff forever. I like to look through the camera. Mm. I think I want it there, yes. So I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive to this one, not this one, which is as by now you're used to, and a little bit of adhesive to the one leaf. Just Feed that under there, like so. That one is staying loose. I'm just catching at the bottom with the bit of adhesive that I added. Just allowing my adhesive to come to the top before I put the lid on. Just so that you can see. So you've got the suggestion of the Elstromeria in the back with this 
Alstomiri here and it just gives it a little bit of interest. Right, so let me just... Remember this bulbs thing that I said oh, I might use? Can add this to our... This is where I make a total mess because I just have bits of card flicked around everywhere. And I can just add the little bit of... I love having some cards that are a little bit more layered. And I often send these to, to family. Just add that weird there. And then what I'm going to do is just add my white splatters now before I add the any wording. So when you're using when you're doing your splatters, I'm just giving my pen a shake, my Posca paint pen. Just pump that pen until it starts flowing on your non-stick craft sheet. And the minute you do that, you'll get beautiful splatters as long as you get that paint moving. There we go. So always remember to get that paint moving. If you don't get the paint moving, well, you're not going to end up with any splatters. And what you can do is you can splatter your stamps just like I've done because I left them in the way. Just so that you can see the detail. There we go. So on the same stamp set, we've got some sentiments. So let's just put this stamp set back. It's quite a nice day out here as well. It's supposed to be gardening really. But I keep jump, I keep flitting from one thing to another. I am terrible. Let's just place that back. And let me have a look at the sentiments. Go where your dreams take you. There are no gardening mistakes. There are no gardening mistakes, only experiments. Let's have this one. Go where your dreams take you. Because we can tuck that in and cut it up. So I'm going to stamp this onto some white card to give that pop of white card, preferably a clean piece of white card, Tracy, because that's not exactly clean. I've got little bits of card. Do you ever get that? If you've got nails like me, you can't pick the little bits of card up. So I'm going to use that black Nocturne ink. And we're going to stamp that on the white card. And I'll just stamp a couple out just in case of when I cut them out if the cutting out doesn't work out quite well you know sometimes you can cut bits and you need two sentiments just to get all the words there we go just place that back so that we don't lose it and then we'll cut this out and I'm going to cut it out so split the sentiment up just to go with our layered design. And of course, it's always slightly more difficult when you've got less card left to cut down. So I want to make sure that I cut that down just so that, so I don't know the dreams to be that long, so we'll just cut that down. There we go. And that, that's it. And then I spend ages just deciding where it's going. So we'll have go where you're... I told you I couldn't tick up, pick up tiny pieces of card. Go where you're... Dreams take you. I think that one can go up a bit. Yeah, honestly, I do faff. When it comes to adding little bits and bobs, I faff. So I'm just going to add that dreams there. 
So go where your dreams take you. And I like the pop of white because I am actually going to add a white mat. And I often stop breathing while I concentrate on getting the sentiment straight. That's a, a, a trait of mine. So just add that there. And then I just want to, you know, I always want to add another little bit. So where are you? So I'm going to take the quill ends, quill ends stamp set, stamp set 908. And I want this little beard. I could have added my mouse if I wanted. But we're going to have the bit this time. I've got so much choice to go with. And on this occasion, I don't want the pen nib. I'm just going to use the little bit just on that white card. And I'm going to just cut the bit out and just leave a very slight white border. And it is very slight, just to make that pop a little bit more. There we go. And I just love tucking the little beard in or the little mouse in just into the projects so it's funny isn't it it looks lovely there but he's looking away from the foliage and everything and, and I like him looking in towards the the flowers etc so I'm going to add a little bit of the pin flare glue just so he's a little bit 3d just Add him there. Just love the little oh, the little beard tucked in. Just so that you can see our little beard tucked in there. And it's always nice to look through the camera because you can see your design. What I'm going to do then. I didn't mention, very bad of me, this piece of craft card is four by six inches. So the craft card is four inches by six inches that I was working on. And then I'm creating a white mat that's obviously a quarter of an inch bigger, which is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And the card blank is five by seven that I'm adding it to. So I'm adding that to a white mat that then just makes everything pop and brings in that white sentiment into the design. Just move that up a little bit. There we go. Just makes it pop nicely. There we go. And I've got a little bit of manoeuvre time. But that white mat matte and layer really works. I'm then going to add that to a five inch by seven inch card blank. So let's add that to a five by seven. Inch card blank. And I often stand up because it just means I can look at it a little bit better. There we go. it. Now just to bring that card into the design a little bit more, I'm just going to add a few little white splatters, just a couple of the corners here, just so it's part of that design. Just clean my hands. Now if you're going to send it to anybody, add a little insert with one of the Alstrom areas. But I'm just going to show you that in detail. 
just so that you can see all the detail of the stamp. I'm really pleased with that and it's lovely to work on craft for a change. So I hope you enjoyed that. Love to all and I hope you have a wonderful week. See you all soon. Bye for now.